I'm standing on an electric truck that costs the same as a diesel to buy. It hauls the same as a diesel on the road, but it doesn't use a single drop of... Yeah, you guessed it. Basically, if you were in a gas station, this thing should scare you. Yes, you join me here in an electric truck. This is the JACN EV60. It's pronounced Jack, by the way, as in I'll never let go Jack. And we all know that there was more than enough room for two people on that wardrobe door, Rose. Selfish, narcissistic, little now there's much to cover in this video, but first I want to talk price because this is the part that's going to have competing truck manufacturers putting their food down and leaning towards the screen. This thing you can buy right now for 148 grand plus GST, which may sound like a lot of money, but it's neck and neck with similarly spec to diesel trucks. Plus, that's without the rebate. This thing's eligible for a 25% or $35,000 EECA rebate, which makes it really competitive. Like, if you had a choice between this and a similarly priced diesel truck, you'd have to be mad not to take this, because then you get a rebate, and then you don't have to worry about diesel fees, and you've got no road user charges for two more years. Uh, hello, Ooh, you're awfully close. <laughs> this is a big vehicle. But what about the range you're asking? This is the Achilles heel of electric trucks, right? Well, officially, it says the range of this vehicle is more than 200 k's around Auckland when loaded. But what does that mean? And if you're a truck driver, or you're an official truckologist, you know what I'm talking about? The range you get out of a charge or a tank of diesel depends on what you're hauling. So that's the point of this video. Let's see if that 200 k's per charge is realistic. Will it get more or will it get less? First, however, let's talk tech specs. And this thing is powered by a 130 kilowatt electric motor, which drives the rear wheel. So it's rear wheel drive, that's logical. Now, if you're wondering if 130 kilowatts doesn't sound like a heck of a lot for a truck, Wait till you hear the torque figures. This thing has 1,200 newton meters of torque driving those rear wheels, which means with hill start assist, theoretically, this thing could climb Everest. Okay, well, maybe not Everest, but at least Mount Eden. Let's talk battery size now. What size battery does this thing have strapped to the underside? Well, it's actually got one large pack comprising of four individual packs altogether with a total capacity of 106.95 kilowatt hours and it's LFP chemistry. But you know what? By far the best thing about this truck, if you own a medium or small or large business, is that you can drive it on a car license. This thing can haul up to six tons. But on a car license now, it's just been changed. You can drive up to seven and a half tons. So you can go to a dealership buy one of these today and go straight to the job site and start making money. You've got two years before road user charges kick in. That is two years of absolutely undercutting the diesel competition. He's obviously more skilled with heavy equipment than I am. <laughs> so I wouldn't have attempted that. Let's talk design now though. And well, it's a truck. It looks like a truck, as in it looks like it's been designed in Minecraft. It's fairly trucky. So, you know, it's square, it's rectangular, it's got a tray on the back. What more do you want? But you should know that this is available as just a cab chassis, so you can always put whatever you like on the back. As for the inside, it is a very similar story. It's a testament to man-made materials. There is a sea of grey synthetics in here, but that does make it relatively easy to clean. It is very spacious. There is loads of room above my head. There's plenty of leg room. So no worries if you are seven feet tall, I think you could still drive this thing comfortably. The only downside to comfort is the fact that because it's a truck, you know, you've got to climb up into it. So if you've got limited mobility, this is not the vehicle for you. But in terms of a truck, feels good driving it out. I feel like a real trucker now. I need a CV radio, breaker breaker one nine. We got a uh, 187. No, hey, oh no, wrong, wrong, no, 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 wrong, <laughs> wrong truck chucking code. What if I take it out of eco mode now that we're at the lights? Does this thing sort of move off briskly or is it a bit of a potato? Oh, far out. That's insane. <laughs> I left everyone behind. Okay, let's talk comfort now though. What do you get if you are going to spend all your day driving this thing? Well, let's start with armrests. It has adjustable armrests, which honestly, I love armrests, so they're brilliant. It's also got a fully adjustable steering wheel. It goes up and down, in and out. And of course, it's got cup holders. It's got dual cup holders that pull out from the dashboard like this. Love that. Okay, it's also got wing mirrors. It's got heaps of wing mirrors, as you'd expect, but they are heated as well. In fact, I've got two on this side and I've got three on that side, giving me well, it makes the track look like a uh, basically a kickboxer's ears. One other thing this has that I've not seen in a similarly sized truck before is airbags. It's got a driver's airbag and a passenger's airbag as well. That's nice. Plus it's got a raft of safety features I'll get to in a sec. But in terms of comfort, 
it's not too bad. It's got an 8-inch touchscreen display here with the reversing camera, as well as reversing sensors dotted all along the back of the vehicle. Makes it a little bit easier to park, because it is, let's face it, a heck of a chonker, this thing. Now, I mentioned airbags. Let's go back to safety features. So yeah, it's got airbags. It's got an automatic handbrake as well, electronic handbrake, with air brakes, plus it's also got Ooh, lane keeping assist, supposedly. I'm gonna test that on the motorway soon. It's got automatic emergency braking as well. If I forget to press the brake, supposedly, it'll do it for me. Actually, it's just easy to drive. I was, like, when I first got in it, I was scared, because, oh, Christ! <laughs> you know, I've never driven a truck this big, this big before, uh, which I know truckologists watching this thinking, oh, it's just a baby. But, you know, for me, on a class one license, this is a bit of a chonker. But it's actually real easy to drive. But what's it like on the motorway? I know you're asking. And to find out, I'm gonna put this through some challenges, namely, a long distance drive and a load test. I'm gonna put this thing through its paces. I'm not just gonna drive it around empty like every other car reviewer. I'm actually gonna load it up and see what it's really like in the real world and to see what its real world range is like. So without further delay, in the next scene, you'll see me getting on the motorway. Yes, you join me about to head north getting on the Auckland motorway. I am wearing my rubber shoes and my gloves are in the glove box. No, they're not actually, because there's no glove box in this thing. There is, however, cavernous storage above my head. So keeping the gloves there. Oh, we've got the green light. Off we go. Oh, this thing's got a bit of power. I've taken it out of eco mode. Oh, for a truck, this thing keeps up with the traffic easily. Now, today's mission is to go from central Auckland all the way north to Te Arai. There, I'm going to be picking up some very precious photosynthesizing cargo and then delivering it to its new home in Walkworth. After that, the Ecotricity team are going to get busy putting those plants in their new home to try and undo some of the damage of all these combustion cars. Once those trees are being planted in the ground, I'm going to then take this truck to the rapid charger down the road and see how long it takes to rapid charge this thing, at least enough electricity to get to its final destination back in Auckland. Now, according to New Zealand Trucker, the average truck delivery driver does about 150 k's per day. So if it can do this journey, which is going to be more than 200 in a day without breaking a sweat, then these trucks are ready for prime time. Of course, if it fails, then we're all back to the drawing board. <laughs> Something that's quite useful in this truck is cruise control as well. You turn that on by flicking the button on the steering wheel, selecting your cruise, and it will go if you're going quick enough. I think we're going too slow in traffic, and that's the thing. It doesn't have adaptive cruise control. It's just boring old cruise control, so you've still got to be in control of the cruise control. Another cool thing this vehicle has is a decent sound system. A lot of trucks, they have very rudimentary sound systems. It's like, you know, listening to a paper cup on a string. This one, it's actually kind of decent. It's got a little bit of depth to it. It's got some decent volume to it. It's okay. The cup holders also work great. If I can put in my drink bottle there, nice and deep, holds that well. As for efficiency so far, as far as I can tell, on the open road, you're gonna get about 160 or so Ks per charge. That's just highway driving because it is not the most aerodynamic vehicle. However, in terms of total running costs, we're gonna find that out in the spud score at the end of this video. As for refueling costs, well, if you were to charge this at home using the EcoSaver plan from Ecotricity, then a full charge of this car's big battery, this truck's big battery, would be about $23 or so, approximately. Of course, there are other plans that you may wanna look at with Ecotricity. Yes, this is a shameless plug because it is New Zealand only certified climate positive electricity provider. So if you care about the climate, if you care about keeping your kids and their kids healthy and happy, you've got to join at ecotricity.co.nz. It also helps that you can save a bit of money by joining Ecotricity. The rates are very good. I'm on it myself. So, you know, I'm not just full of hot air, not just full of carbon. Neither is this truck. We got a great big convoy rocking through the night. That is a tragic song. You, oh, see, now finally it does the beep when I get too close to the line. I'm going to turn that off because I can see the line. I know what a white line looks like, car. I grew up in the 1980s. So its top speed is limited to 90 kilometers an hour, which is the top speed of, of a heavy vehicle anyway. So I'd love to do a zero to 100 time, but I can't. I have to mention the elephant in the room. Something I discovered about this particular early entrant to New Zealand, this new arrivee, is that this one doesn't have AC charging. That's important you know that. The next batch of Jack NEV 60s that comes into New Zealand will have AC charging. This one doesn't, which means you can only either use the public rapid charging network, of which there's no shortage. There's rapid charges everywhere now. Or you can, if you've got three phase power, you can get a portable DC rapid charger. But you're gonna be looking at somewhere around six, seven, eight grand for one of those. So have to factor that into the cost of the vehicle if you don't wanna use the rapid charger. Because charging at home or at the business, that's where the savings are. Another complaint I have about this vehicle, let's get it all off my chest now, is that because it's got really firm suspension, it's a highly sprung vehicle, it's designed to take loads, it means that when you don't have a load in the back, 
it gets very bouncy. Honestly, I think I should have packed my sports bra kind of bouncy. But right now, I've got another 100 k's or so to get to our first destination. I've got 87% state of charge. Let's see if that's enough. I'll see you in Treetown. We are fully loaded with our precious cargo of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of little plants. For all those ads you see from wealthy individuals trying to sell you carbon capture storage, forget about it. It already exists. Those trees there, that is the ultimate carbon capture storage. Oh, washboard gravel. We've made it to Walkworth. My precious cargo is still all on board. Those trees look like they've been blown pretty hard back there. All right, plants have been offloaded successfully. We're gonna put those in the ground in a sec. Right now though, it's time to go and charge this thing up. Now, time is money when you're running a delivery truck. So can we refuel this thing in one lunch break? Oh, the charger, <laughs> I can see it. It's right there. There is no shortage of these charge net chargers. So let's go plug one in. All right, we've got this thing ready to charge. Now, one complaint I do have about this vehicle is the charging port location is right down there between the cab and the tray. It's not a really convenient location and in some chargers it won't reach. These chargers have nice long cables and extenders on the top. Now these are charge net rapid chargers. To activate the chargers easy, you can either use your key fob or the mobile app. I'm just gonna select this one. Car detected, that one, start. It's been charging for a few minutes now. I can see on the charge net mobile app, it's pulling 75 and a half kilowatts, which yeah, to be honest, that's a pretty average charging speed for 2025. I know EVs can charge faster than this, but I only need to charge enough to get to my destination back down in Auckland. So will it get to 65% in less time than it takes to have a lunch break? And we are charged. We're at 66% state of charge. Let's now head back to Auckland, crunch some numbers, and give you some running costs. Good news, we've made it back to Auckland, back where we started. We have done a total of 248 kilometers now. That is not bad, and that's a lot more than the average truck driver does, but we're pulling into the Jack dealership right now. Time to tally up the costs by doing the Spud Score. Starting with performance, and it's no rocket ship compared to a Tesla, but for a light truck, it's very quick, so six potatoes out of 10. Handling's next, and for a truck, it did well on twisty roads due to that firm suspension, so six spuds again. As for comfort, it's got aircon, and it's spacious, but every time I took a speed bump enthusiastically, I needed a sports bra, so three spuds there. Let's talk efficiency now, and it's a thirsty EV. Using around 38 units of electricity per 100 Ks in the city, and around 50 on the open road. This means I estimate your city only range to be around 250 k's with a medium load and your open road range to be around 150 k's with a medium load. Gadgetry is next and it's pretty spartan like most work trucks and I wish it had vehicle to load to supply mains power to job sites so with that in mind I can only give it three spuds. But is it good value? And the answer is yes. I mean, your fuel costs are gonna be near zero if you run it off your solar power. Your servicing requirements are much lower than in a diesel truck. There's no road user charges for another two years with this thing either. So the conditions in New Zealand right now are good. The price right now is good. And if you're in the market, I'd say act now. Don't leave money on the table. As for charging speed, it's pretty average to be honest. Like I used one of ChargeNet's growing number of hyper rapid chargers, and these things are capable of charging at 300 kilowatts. And I charge the truck from 20% to 80% and it took about 50 minutes and it peaked at only 77 kilowatts. So this slower rapid charging speed means that if you're going beyond the truck's battery range, make sure you have charging times coincide with your mandated rest breaks to minimize downtime. But what about style you ask? Well, take a look at it. It's a truck. I mean, it's square. The only thing more square is well, me. How about being fit for purpose? Well, the charging speed aside, it does exactly what it's supposed to do, and it does it much cheaper than a diesel could, although I am taking a point off for this particular early version not having AC charging. Apparently, the next batch coming in will have it. But it's the PSC, which will influence your purchasing decision, and this truck holds a convenient 82 tubers, but most are situated in the storage behind the driver, which is inconvenient, so seven points there, which gives the Jack NEV60 a combined spud score of 53. And there you have it, that is the guts of this, the Jack NEV60. It's a truck that just sort of does what it says on the tin, really. It's not the most luxurious vehicle you'll ever drive, but it's a service vehicle, it just works. Not only that, it's big draw card, I think, is its running costs. I mean, your fuel costs are near zero. Your servicing costs are near zero. Your road user charges are zero. 
So no matter what delivery business you're in, no matter what truck you're currently running, this will run at a fraction of the price.